What's good, YouTube fans? Speaks back. Another video. All right, football season is approaching, and um, on Speak today, you had um, Deshaun Jackson join Shady McCoy, as well as Acho, and then the guy Dave, and they discussed Jalen Hurts and um, what he has to prove this year. And this is interesting going into the season because I expect Jalen Hurts to have really an MVP type year. So I want to see what these brothers got to say about it, man, and I'll chime in. Football. Honestly, y'all, I'm sure, have witnessed several Jalen Hurts conversations. There will be no greater Jalen Hurts conversation you will likely hear this year than the Jalen Hurts conversation you're about to hear. I'm sitting next to the Eagles all-time rushing leader. I'm sitting next to one of the greatest wide receivers the Eagles have ever seen wear that midnight green. So let's get into it while talking about the Eagles quarterback. Shady McCoy, you played with a lot of great Eagles quarterbacks from Donovan McNabb, Michael Vick, Nick Foles, amongst others. So what's this current quarterback, Jalen Hurts, have to prove this? Season. Dang, man, he just, when he said that Deshaun Jackson, one of the best wide receivers of myself, ah, some memories, man. Mm -hmm. He was looking back. He, you know, he talking my first little dance move. Did he? At the time, it was the, uh, who was that? He was the, that was the jerk. He's doing a jerk. <laughs> oh, you know what? Oh, you know, you know, okay. no, I got a question. Who created the Shady Bounce? Oh, me. Shady Bounce. Crazy. Did you do it in pit? Or did the Shady Bounce become an Eagles? It came in Summer in pit. That came to Eagles. It's yeah, Eagles. Eagles. I mean, it's part of the end zone when I'm in there. Was it? <laughs> did, did you do it your rookie year, or did you wait until you were 2 5? Yeah, when I was the man, I started doing that. I was really the man, you know. I mean, it was, it was the DJX show. I had to just fall along. I know, man. I had to be blocked and doing screens anyway. I need to anyway. look up the origins of the Shady Bounce. Okay, I get it. I won't get distracted. 2-5, what's Hurts got to prove this season? Um, He got to prove that he's not just a one-hit wonder, right? The, 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 the year that everybody fell in love with him, he couldn't do no wrong, right? We was down. We needed to win. He found a way to win. We was down. We couldn't score. Find a way to score. That's who Jalen Hurts was. We watched him get better and better and better. See, in Philadelphia, I told, I told the Shawnees earlier, Everybody can't play there. A dude like Jalen Hurst got that thick skin. Yeah. That he can play there, got that attitude. Hey. All right, now this is why I don't necessarily agree with this take of Shady McCoy's that Jalen Hurst is a one-hit wonder. Um, now, if he means as far as getting to the Super Bowl and um, having a season like he did in 2022, then I I guess I understand. But uh, people speak as if Jalen Hurst has had failed seasons. Um, when we look at Jalen Hurst's first season, as a rookie, he only played about four games. Um, this was Carson Wentz's team to lose, and Carson Wentz lost it that year. But by the time Jalen Hurts got in, we're talking around week 12 or so as the, as the actual full-time starter. And this was to, like, kind of take a look at him to see if he was, was even worth, you know, another look. I, I think that was the thinking on the part of the ownership. Uh, Jalen Hurts' second year and first full year as a starter, the Philadelphia Eagles made it to the, made it to the playoffs. They lost in the first round, but they made it to the playoffs. For me, when I'm judging the quarterback, that's very big to me. And I consider that a successful year when you consider the fact that the Eagles were not a very talented team that year. You know, we had uh, a rookie, Devontae Smith. We had uh, Jalen Rager, who was a failed wide receiver. Uh, Dallas Goddard was still very young and actually shared a lot of time with uh, Zach Ertz that first year. Uh, you had a new coach in Nick Sirianni that year who was trying to implement an offense, a new offensive coordinator in Shane Steichen. You had uh, first-time defensive coordinator uh, Jonathan Gannon who brought in a number of different pieces. And, and there was it was just a fresh new start for the year. So for me, I believe the Eagles won eight that year, won eight and seven. Um, and for me, that was like, you know, or nine and eight or whatever it was. That was a good, successful season, you know, to me. You know, first year quarterback. You know, I don't go. I don't expect these guys to go out here and be like Patrick Mahomes. But to act like he's just a one hit wonder, no, I don't think so. I think uh, Jalen Hurts has shown slow, slight progression and has gotten better pretty much uh, every year. The argument would be, was last year that much of a regression? Or was it just one of those things? Soft? Ain't no Ben Simmons. You see what I'm saying? He could fit in Philadelphia. But I gotta be honest. I need him to show back up. To make sure that, hey, the, the, the things I thought about him, the way I felt about him as a player, is real. When, when America watched him play, he's so good, he's so good. MVP candidate, right? All pro, hard to do. Is that real? Super Bowl, taking the team to the Super Bowl. And balling out in the Super Bowl. Is that real? I think when you think about the Eagles, you talk about how our defense last year wasn't that good. Because they weren't. Let's be honest. It was like, what, break 30th or something like that. Didn't want to tackle, didn't want to play. Yep. But Jalen Hurts, I feel like he is so good that he could change that and elevate everybody on the team. I need to see that, because if not, we're going to be in trouble. We got a, the, the defense is probably a little better. We made some moves, got some guys in the secondary, but they are young. We're going to need Jalen Hurts to carry us. 
Deshaun said it earlier, we paid all our wide receivers for a reason because they are good. We had a really good running back last year. He was really, really good. Yeah. DeAndre Swift, this year we got even better. Saquon Barkley. So he has all the tools and players around him. And he has the coaching around him. It's up to him to be that same Jalen Hurts we found in love with. Yeah, get- all right. Um, his take was not the worst take I've ever heard, but it was a little bit all over the place. On one hand, say that the, the defense is whatever. It's not. It's a, uh, there's some new places pieces in there, but we don't know about the defense. He said Jalen Hurts is going to have to carry us, and that I don't understand. Um, then she turns around and says, uh, "We signed Saquon Barkley." Well, if you sign Saquon Barkley, then why would Jalen Hurts have to carry you? Unless you mean just the offense has to carry the team and you're putting the whole offense on the quarterback. If that's the case, I mean, I just disagree with Shady. I get it. He's a, you know, a player that may one day be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he won't be first ballot or anything like that. But, you know, he may. But I just don't agree with that, that particular take. Um, I, I think everyone knows in reality that quarterbacks don't drag teams and don't carry teams. I just think that's a narrative that people go with that they just aren't, for whatever reason, don't have enough courage to challenge. Um, I would prefer my journalist or my analyst to have more depth than this, but, you know, that, that that's his position. It is what it is. Looks like you are thinking, big dog. What have your thoughts garnered? What's Hurts got to prove? Man, you see, you, you see me taking my time over here. I'm kind of like you know, hesitant to get into this. But uh, honestly, man, I, it's going to hurt to say this because I love Jalen Hurts, man. Okay. I, I think, you know, I'm a big advocate for him. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen him since day one come in that organization and change and spark up instantly. So for me, Jalen, it's, it's a make or break year for you, man, oh, honestly. Wow. It's, it's a make or break. And the reason why I say that is because he got the contract. He got $250 million. We rewarded him. And he's deserving of it. I'm going to say that first and foremost. He's definitely deserving of that. Losing the last five, uh, losing, yeah, the last five out of the six games, yeah. that hurts me last year. We start 10 and 1, right? Mm-hmm. And we just go on the downhill. So this year we're hearing Nick Sirianni. <clears throat> we hire Kellen Moore to come in. This is a big piece of the offense. Yeah. And we're restructuring it to get it together for this year, right? So the redemption year is big. Redemption year. Mm. I'm calling it the redemption year. Like, All right. Um, obviously, I disagree with this take as well. Um, look, everybody is entitled to their to their own opinion and so on. Um, I, I don't believe Jay, this is a make or break year for Jalen Hurts. I think the notion is is absolutely absurd. Um, I think it, it's 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 ridiculous. Um, what did Jalen Hurts do two years ago? Uh, put forth an MVP level season. Uh, get the Eagles to the Super Bowl. Play his ass off in the Super Bowl. And you're telling me because last year, a year after the uh, Super Bowl, where teams um, historically have collapses after the Super Bowl, especially the Super Bowl loser. This is what history has said. And the Eagles, all of you, what you look at, you'll see was definitely a uh, ended up being a Super Bowl hangover, collapse uh, towards the end. Um, and there was a number of things that came together. But to act as if um, his year was so damn bad, like, he, he was just so horrible that he would be in a position where it's make or break this year. It's just lunacy to me, especially being this being the first year in the actual contract. And even then, he's not that much against the cap to where it, it's all of that. You're taking this big chunk of money. I, I just don't think Deshaun Jackson took the time to really look into this. Uh, it looks to me like, you know, it's the typical guy come on the show. And, and I love Deshaun, man, one of my favorite Eagles receivers. And I'm an Eagles fan, of course, but seems like he just came up there, took the pieces of paper from the producers and maybe just thought something up for the last 15 to 30 minutes. I don't know. Um, I, I don't like this take. I think it's weak. My boy just said we paid everybody. The two guys outside, we got, we, we got the best receivers in the league, first and foremost, let me say that. We got A.J. Brown. We got Devontae Smith on the outside. We bring in Saquon Barkley. I mean... It don't get no better than this. That's right. And I got to touch on the playoff record. I mean, he's two and three. I like his touchdowns, though. Ten touchdowns and three turnovers. So we need some more of that play in the regular season. Yeah. Less turnovers and just manage the ball. Jalen, you don't have to do it all yourself. We bring in a running game. Let's run the... All right. Um, so now that we're going to the narrative, Jalen Hurts is just a turnover machine because of, like, last season, the last five games or whatever. Unbelievable. I'm talking about a year where the Eagles win 11 games. But, you know, it's fine. We want to hold them to a crazy standard. Um, but I don't I don't like the interception argument because of the fact that 
Um, those rarely have everything to do with why the team lose. Uh, whatever. I guess you got to point to something because his numbers aren't that bad. So I guess they just that's what people are pointing to. But what, what I talk about is Josh Allen throws more interceptions. Patrick Mahomes throw, throws more interceptions. Of course, the counter is, hey, well, Patrick Mahomes wins Super Bowls. But still, the point is, like, that isn't really just the, the core of the problem. The core of the problem last year was the offense, the, the predictability of the offense, the, un, the lack of creativity on the offense, the fact that the Eagles ran the least amount of motion in the whole entire league. Um, they just go out there with all these great weapons and just rely on their talent. Like you had a coach in Nick Sirianni last year who was just relying on the talent of uh, Jalen Hurts and and um, and uh, Jonathan Gannon and I'm not, not Jonathan Gannon, AJ Brown and, and Devontae Smith. He just counting on their talent. You know, he didn't bring much to the table. And then all of this has been made. All of this information is readily available. You know, why these guys aren't talking about Jalen Hurts, how much of a hard worker he is, how good he's looking in camp. How about the fact that he called Wink Martindale to figure out, you know, how and why wasn't he able to beat the defense and so on. Like, this guy is completely dedicated, and I think Jalen Hurts has shown already that he has the character to be that guy that you don't have to worry about. I, I just don't understand the lack of depth, you know, from these two uh Eagle legends. Ball and distribute the ball. Let's make it easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think this year is, uh, is big. It's a redemption year. And it's a make or break year for him. Well said. It's been good. This what week. does make or break year mean? So if, if, if Jalen Hurts doesn't do whatever, fit whatever, meet whatever metric Deshaun uh, Jackson is talking about, what does that mean? The Eagles are going to get rid of him, get another quarterback? Like, what, what do you mean make or break in the first year of a four-year extension? I, I don't understand that. You have all these young players A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, all of them under contract, set up for at least three or four years. Why would it be make or break? Why wouldn't it be a window that you're looking at? That, that, like, I mean, what are you talking about? The only way it's make or break is if the Eagles, like, win four or five games or something like that, and then that would just be a disaster. Good. That's been good. Let me try to add a little bit to it. Dave, you'll appreciate what I'm about to say. I was introduced to Jalen Hurts, the football player, before the Eagles were introduced to Jalen Hurts, the football player, because I'm a college football analyst on the weekend. So I've been watching Jalen Hurts since 2016. Jalen Hurts has to prove he can land punches that he telegraphs. What do I mean? Yeah. When Jalen Hurts is not known, that's when he's his best. 2016, SEC, first time offensive player of the year yep. as a freshman. Nobody knew who Jalen Hurts was, and he delivered in the best way. But by his sophomore year, we became a little bit familiar with Jalen Hurts. So in the biggest of moments, on the biggest of stage, Jalen Hurts had to get benched for Tua Tungabailoa. So Tua Tungabailoa could go in. All right, so his argument is um, that because Jalen Hurts was unknown in his first year, um, he played well. He got to the championship game, and then that was the year he lost to Deshaun Watson. But but he played well. But remember, he lost that game. So he's saying his second year, even though he got back to a championship game, he's saying he had to be benched. But notice, it's benched in a championship game. It's not like he's – but he's making it sound like Jalen Hurts uh, all that year was figured out. So to say that uh, you're going to take his whole sophomore season and narrow that down to just uh, a bad game in the championship game, I think it's problematic, and um, I just don't agree with that take. And then beat Georgia in the national championship game. We now know who Jalen Hurts is. His third year, he loses a job to Tua Tungabailo, and then he transfers to Oklahoma. We did not know of Oklahoma Jalen Hurts because he had been in the SEC. Leads Oklahoma to a college football playoff. Once again, when he's unknown, he does his best. When he's known, he does not necessarily perform at the highest level. Cut to the National Football League. All right, so that was his last year in college. He's saying he only succeeded there because he was unknown. No, Jalen Hurts was known. Jalen Hurts was just running a different offense. Like, what do you mean he's unknown? Like, that doesn't make any sense. The unknown aspect has more to do, um, that has more to do, is more involved than just Jalen Hurts, in other words. Right? That's Jalen Hurts also with Lincoln Riley. That's what they didn't know. Right? So what, what is this punch back and all this stuff? I don't, don't get what he's saying. And then there was no second year to judge whether or not they figured out Jalen, um, Jalen Hurts from the, um, Lincoln Riley, Jalen Hurts. So that, that take is bad.
He was a second round pick, fifth quarterback taken. Nobody knew who he was. His first snap was actually at the wide receiver position because Carson once was a starter. His second year, he was eight and seven, still didn't know who he was. So you go to eight to seven, you don't know who he is? All right, why in his, his first year, his rookie year, he's playing four games, right? Now his second year, he has a new uh, coach, new quarterback. What do you mean you don't you don't know who he is? And eight, he went to eight and seven, he got to the playoffs. So that second year, they should know who he is. That, that None of this makes any sense. All right, so he's saying you don't know who Jalen Hurts is when he when he leaves uh, college, right? He's saying, okay, he's second-round pick, but nobody knows who he is, even though they uh, have all their data on these damn quarterbacks. They interview him and everything, but okay, nobody knows who he is. He comes to the league. He doesn't start. He plays four games, right? They're supposed to not know who he is when that happens, right? So he's – adding that and his whole second year and he's still saying people don't know who he is what the hell are you talking about he got to the playoffs with a rookie uh damn wide receiver another wide receiver that was a bust a half uh, defense like what, what what are we doing this whole take is horrible. His third year is an unknown. He takes the Eagles to a Super Bowl. But by his fourth year, when the punch is now telegraphed and Jalen Hurts, we know that you're coming. Now you have 15 interceptions because Jalen Hurts, we've seen you coming. You're not sneaking up on us anymore. When Jalen Hurts is an unknown commodity, he plays his best. But Jalen Hurts is no longer sneaking, sneaking up on anybody because his bank account precedes his name. So Jalen Hurts. All right, this is first of all, like, why is this take so bad and you are all right, um, like let's say for example, um, the, the way quarterbacks or the way most coaches like a, uh, will typically watch film on you, so we can go back to 2022 or whatever, say you played the first four games. By the time you get to their fifth coach, the coach is looking at the way you've played in the last four games. So every single week, the, co the teams know who you are. Like where is this idea that you're going to go, you had to go whole 16 games, now they know who you are the next year. His whole premise is faulty. So like, so the conclusion is faulty. Like like when he played uh, Andy Reid in the Super Bowl, Andy Reid knew who the hell he was. He, he had a whole year of data worth of data on him, and he still performed. So to say that he only performs when he's unknown is bullshit. Like this is a, this take is horrible. Like out of ten, I give it a two has to prove he can land a punch that he telegraphs. Everybody knew Deshaun Jackson was fast. And Deshaun Jackson still stop. ran by you. That's true. Everybody That's true. knew Shady could cut on a dime. <laughs> and Shady McCoy would still make you slip and fall as you tried to meet him in the hole. They telegraphed their punches and they still drew blood. Jalen Hurts, can you land the punches that you telegraph? That's what he needs to prove to That's me. That's well said. Horrible, horrible take. I love like that. that. I don't like following you up when you give these speeches. It's, <laughs> yeah. not, it's, not, it's not fun for me. But this is what I want to see from Jalen Hurts. I know he's a good player. I think he'll be a good player this year. The Eagles have one of the most talented rosters in the league, especially on offense. I'm not worried about that as long as he's healthy. Okay. Can Jalen Hurts keep this train on the tracks what do you mean? in Philadelphia? I'll tell you what I mean. The Eagles look like a great team. The Eagles have a lot of potential to be a disaster if things go poorly. Th th think about that. First of all, I'm here with two longtime Eagles. Just know that. Be careful. Just know that. 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 Y'all will agree with this. Okay. This is Philadelphia. There are very few cities that care as much as deeply right. about this team. So with the way last season ended, you already got that. You already got the whole fan base watching everything that goes on here, analyzing every practice update. You got a team full of huge, loud prideful personalities whether it's aj brown whether it's saquon barkley coming from a messy divorce with a division rival right up the road you don't think these guys have a lot of ambition a lot of hopes that this season goes well chauncey gardner johnson's back on the defense is one of the biggest personalities Rocking in the nfl eight. Philadelphia's offensive linemen are even famous. Like, Lane Johnson is Jordan a personality. Mylotta. Jordan is famous. Jordan Mylotta has, is famous for singing in addition to being a great left tackle. Jason Kelsey is going to be on national TV analyzing everything this team does. Oh, did I mention the head coach is one of the biggest, loudest personalities in the NFL who talks trash to opposing fan bases on the side? All right, so basically Dave just believes that the Eagles have a culture problem and that Jalen Hurst has to prove that he can lead uh, this year. Uh, I mean, whatever. I mean, if you believe last year boiled down to that, it looks that way from the outside looking into many. I, I don't really deny that. So, 
Um, yeah, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Um, I, I mean, the way I see it, though, I believe the culture problem came as a result of like just losing and the coach not being able to figure out how to stop the bleeding. That's where I think it really came from. Um, there was also a Super Bowl hangover there, which led to some of it. I mean, I think there's a whole lot of that kind of stuff, but like why that's on Jalen Hurts, I don't know. I guess the, everything's on the quarterback. Line and under the stadium? Mm -hmm. Did I mention their security guards a big person? Big dumb. Big dumb. <laughs> Free big dog. Everything about this team well is said. outsized and and primed to go sideways if things don't go well. And wh what do we know? An NFL season is full of adversity. Mm -hmm. They'll lose a game. They'll have a game where maybe they get away from the run game in the second half or they struggle with turnovers. Can Jalen Hurts rally that? And and that is that's his calling card. Is yeah, he's got thick skin. He's cool as a cucumber. Can Jalen Hurts rally all of those personalities and keep it all focused on the end goal? Because that wasn't always the case last year. I mean, we we don't have to pull up the clips of the infighting and the arguing on the sidelines. Like we all saw that stuff happen. We saw the story come out a couple weeks ago about how maybe Jalen and Sirianni were on the same page. Yeah, that's it. My thing is like, why why is that on Jalen Hurts? Um, we actually saw like. A.J. Brown looking at the coach sideways. We saw Devontae Smith going back and forth with the coach. What does Jalen Hurts come in in there? And, like, if it's, if it's something between the coach and a receiver, what is Jalen Hurts going to jump in there and fix it? You know, no, a lot of that is on the coach as well. Uh, the onus is on kind of everybody to stay cool and calm. Uh, but one of the main things they did is they got rid of a lot of damn people, man. A lot of those people that came in here and just didn't work out well, like whether it's Kevin Byard or whether it's Shaq Leonard or whether it's um, uh, whatever other guys that were there that I don't even feel like thinking about right now who were not part of the culture, didn't fit well. Maybe it was Hassan Reddick. I don't know. But you got to kind of trust that they made moves that they think will help fix that. And, I mean, that's all you kind of go with. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not going to see his point as invalid. But what I'm not sitting around worrying about that. Stuff is there. It might it might not be an issue if they do well, but if they don't, can Jalen Hurts keep it all on track? Let and me keep them let going? me build on that point. That's what I want to say. What I love about doing this show right here, right now, at this very moment, is I'm sitting with Deshaun Jackson, I'm sitting, sitting with Shady McCoy, and I'm it's almost deja vu what you're saying, because in 2011, 12, 13, the Eagles had huge personalities. Deshaun Jackson was playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Shady McCoy, playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Brent Selleck at tight end was a big personality. Evan Mathis at guard was a big personality for a guard. Jason Peters was a <laughs> big personality. The Eagles had huge personalities. So Shady and Jack, I'll ask y'all both separately, but please answer. Jack, answer first for me. What did McNabb, what did Mike Vick, what did your quarterbacks do to make sure that, okay, if Shady went for 200, but Jack only had five targets and had 42 yards, what did your quarterbacks oh, do question. to make sure that y'all were happy? Let's take a light on McNabb, you know? I ain't gonna touch on too much McNabb, but I, I think, honestly, as far as a quarterback, right, and it's only one ball that can go around that football field, yep. right? So you have to somewhat manage it, and I talked about it a little bit in my segment, right? And managing a football, Making it simple. You know what I'm saying? If it's a play call, get it, get the ball to where it needs to go to, right? A.J. Brown, you see how he can get if he's not getting the ball. Devontae Smith is not similar so much that guy, right? Yeah. So as far as that, I mean, get the ball, distribute it, right? Let's make it easy. At the end of the day, I was going to ask you that. Do you think it's going to be a soap opera? I mean, because this can get, it can get messy, but it's on the quarterback to manage that. And I think Jalen Hurts, we need more. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I think I pretty much, uh, you know, say what I want to say about this um yeah so like I said I will probably be going live from the next Eagles game uh Saturday last uh, preseason game as we get ready for the game against the Packers I'll see y'all then peace out